everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be using a union-based SQL injection in order to determine the data type of the columns that are returned by the vulnerable query, which is step number two in the union-based SQL injection attack. Okay, before we solve the exercise, we need to cover a little bit of theory on how the union operator works. I've got the notes document open from the previous lab because we covered the first portion of it there and today we'll be covering the second portion. So in the previous lab, we talked about having two tables, table one and table two. Table one had two columns, A and B, and table two had two columns, C and D, and this was the content of table one and this was the content of table two. Now, when I wanna combine the results of two select queries together, I can use the union operator. So over here, I'm combining the results of this query with this query over here. So select A and B from table one. So select all the entries in columns A and B from table one would output one, two, three, four, and then select C and D from table two. So select all the entries from columns C and D from table two would output the entries in table two. So two, three, and four, five. And using the union operator over here combines the results together. So you see over here, you've got one, two, three, four. That's the result of the first query. And two, three, four, five. That's the result of the second query. And that's the way that the union operator works. Now, you can just simply combine the results of any two queries together. Instead, you have to comply by the rules of the union operator, and there are two. We discussed that in the previous lab. So the number and the order of the columns must be the same in all queries. So you've got over here the number of columns A and B is two, and then the number of columns in the second query is also two, and that's why you're satisfying the first rule. The second rule is that the data types must be compatible. You'll see over here the data types of columns A and B is integer and integer, and then the data types of columns C and D is also integer and integer, and that's why this query gives you uh, the results, so a 200 response versus giving you an error because you do comply with the rules of the union operator. Now, when you're conducting a SQL injection attack from a black box perspective, you don't actually know the number of columns that the query is using, and you don't know the data types of the columns that the query is using. And that's why you need to figure those two types out. So that's step number one and step number two in a union-based SQL injection attack. And we talked about step number one in the first lab, so I'm just gonna label this step number one. German number of columns. We said there were two ways of doing this. One is iteratively adding select null statements. So if you have a query over here, so select a certain number of columns from table one. Again, you don't know the number of columns because you're approaching it from a black box perspective. So what you could do is add union select null. And if the number of columns in this query is not compatible with the number of columns in this query, then you would get an error. And that's an indication that you didn't use the number, of, the correct number of columns. And so what you do is add another null value. And if you still get an error, that means you know that it doesn't have just two columns. And then you keep doing that iteratively until you get a 200 response code, which is what you're getting over here after you've added three null values. And that means that you've reached the correct number of columns and the number of columns is the number of null values that you added. So because I have three null values, I know that the query uses three columns. So that's way number one of determining the number of columns. Way number two is to use the order by clause, which orders by the column that you give it. And so over here, if I say order by one, it'll order by the first column and you get a 200 response code. If I say order by two, it'll order by the second column and you get a 200 response code. Now, if I say order by three, you're ordering by a column that does not exist. And so this is gonna throw an error. And when I see an error, that means I know that I've reached a column that does not exist. And so the number of columns that the query is using is whatever value I've reached minus one. So three minus one, which is two. And you'll see over here that it has two columns. So that was step number one, determining the number of columns. Step number two, which is the main focus of the lab today, is to determine the data type of the columns. 
And the reason that's important is because when I'm exploiting a union-based SQL injection attack, I want to output interesting things like uh, the hashed password of a user and the usernames of the users of the application. And so, since these values are of type text, I would need to output these values in columns that accept data types of type text. And so I need to find the columns that have data type text first in order to be able to output the content. And so the way to do that is similar to the one over here. So I know from step number one that my query is using three columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iteratively add select statements and put a value of type text in each column and see if it throws an error. So I start off with the first column. If this throws an error over here, that means the column is not type string, but if it doesn't throw an error, then the column is of type string. So over here, if this does not throw an error, that means I know column A is uh, of type string, and so I could use it, or of type text, and so I could use it. Now, if it does throw an error, that means I know it's of a different type, and so I can't use it. And then the next thing that I will try, we do this iteratively, is I'll use the second column and see if this throws an error. And then same goes for the third column. I'll do the same thing and see if this throws an error until I've enumerated which columns allow you to output data type text. All right, now that we've covered the theory, let's start solving the exercise. So the exercise says this lab contains a SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. The results from the query are returned in the application's response, so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. To construct such an attack, you first need to determine the number of columns returned by the query. You can do this using a technique you learned in the previous lab. So that's this one over here, so how to determine the number of columns. The next step is to identify a column that is compatible with string data, which is step number two over here that we discussed. The lab will provide a random value that you need to make appear within the query results. To solve the lab, perform a SQL injection union attack that returns an additional row containing the value provided. This technique helps you determine which columns are compatible with string data. Okay, so let's access the lab. And that might take some time. In the meantime, I'm going to remove this and put an analysis tab. Okay, so the vulnerable field is the category, so the product category field. So I'm going to click on gifts over here. And what that does is it filters on the category gifts. And we could see that in the URL over here. So this is of our vulnerable field, and this is where we'll be conducting our union-based SQL injection attack. All right. Like we said, step number one is to determine the number of columns. And I'm going to use way number two to do that. So using the order by clause, so close off the query, order by one and then comment out the rest of the query to see if it gives me an error or not let's do that okay i don't get an error which means there's at least one column which makes sense because you could see over here there has to be at least a column for the name and then a column for the price now let's try order by two you see over here that it ordered by the second column Oh, actually, no, it ordered by the second column, which is one over here. So you've got an ID column uh, that exists, but is not shown on the page. So that's interesting. You can't use that to output data on the page. Let's try order by three. And you see over here, it ordered by the third column, which is the price column. Let's try order by four. Okay, and we get an error. 
which means that it has three columns and first column is not shown on the page. Okay, that'll come in handy when we're trying to output data on the page. Now the second step is to determine the data type of the columns. So I know that there's three columns, so my query would look something like this. Union select null, null, and comment out the rest of the query. So let's try with the first one. Although it doesn't really matter if you try or not because it doesn't get outputted on the page and so it's pretty useless to us. You get an error and likely because it's an ID field so it doesn't have data of type string. So let's try. Second column. You see over here that it definitely has data of type string because you've got alphabets over here. So this should work. Let's try it. Okay, and you could see over here that you outputted data. Now let's try the third column. You could keep this over here actually because it works. Try the third column and see if it outputs an error. And you get an error. So the third value is, sorry, the third column is also not of a uh, data type string. Okay, so we only have one column, which is second column of type string. Okay, and so to complete the exercise, we need to make the database retrieve the string over here. And so to do that, we'll be outputting it in the second column. Put that over here. And this should successfully solve the exercise. Here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. Okay, so we successfully completed the exercise. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.